This guy is a terrific. And, and when it comes to a couple of things, and we'll touch on them with uh, Richard Green in our conversation that's about to uh, ensue, um, with, a, with regard to a couple of things that seem like intractable issues, I'll give you the example of the Electoral College, and we know it to be a problem. And we know it to really be a blight on our democracy and our de democratic republic. Uh, Richard Green will remind you, as he's done before, uh, that there are that there are efforts underway already to change the electoral uh, college, and and they're not like just it's not just talk. So uh, we'll get to that. But before uh, we get to that, I want to talk a, a little bit more about the election down ballot races. How about it for Richard Green, the Civics Dean, everybody? The Mark Thompson Show. Thank you for joining us on short notice. I know you're, you know, you're, you're dining with celebrities and you're, you know, you're well sought after. You have your TikTok audience that's after you all the time. You're a big deal. So Richard Green, thank you. What, um, what is the state of the state right now, Richard Green? So I just have to tell you, literally, I am at the Sherman Oaks batting cage because I'm so revved up about the Dodgers and the World Series. I uh, just to relieve some election <laughs> oh, I stress. You were batting right? for Kamala or something now. This is oh, something yeah, look, you're doing with your tic tac audience. Yeah. So apparently I'm not a for you, but so yeah. yeah. Dodgers, go Dodgers. <laughs> They're not gonna call so, your number tonight. Yeah. <laughs> listen, if Shohei can't play, I'm ready. <laughs> so, right, what so what's the, the state question? of the state hot shot what's the state of this come down off of cloud nine it the series ain't over yet you, now you're back in new york um <laughs> let, i i want to ask you about what's the state of the state richard green the civic dean you know and i mean that almost literally but you have gone state to state uh you also are very close to a lot of these democratic strategists and pollsters you have strong opinions as to how the entire thing is being prosecuted give me your sense of things right now with just a week out so, I mean, I agree with Kamala and everybody else who says, I can't believe it's even close, but it's super, super, super close. From everybody I've heard from that I've talked to, except for two people. So I have a friend, a very smart friend who's never been wrong up in Silicon Valley. He says it's gonna be a blowout for Kamala. I have, I saw somebody online who is a pollster, guru who says the polls are wrong the polls are wrong it's going to be a blowout for kamala and democrats um i had a number of people who have said that it could be different but right now i believe that um it's going to be so close that the election and the future of america will be decided by who wakes up with a headache who has a last minute emergency where their kid is sick and they they have to stay home to be with the kid or they just are too tired or they got a job that took them out of town and they didn't have time to go vote. That is how freaking close wow. this is in all of the seven swing states. Wow. Uh, and so Mo Direct asked, what about the House and the Senate? Is there any kind of movement there that offers a predictability? I mean, can you forecast that at all? So I spoke to somebody who is a very big deal person in Ohio who has been a member of Congress. And I said, how is it going with Sherrod Brown in Ohio? And he said, it's a coin flip. So let's just focus on that. If Sherrod Brown loses his Democratic scene in Ohio, we're already going to, we Democrats are already gonna lose the seat in West Virginia. That takes us, that alone, everything else, ceteris paribus, everything else being equal, that takes us from 51 to 49 and Mitch McConnell's replacement is the majority leader of the Senate. So we have very tough races in Nevada, in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin. The only good news is that I'm hearing more and more, as, as you are as well, that Colin Allred could in fact flip Texas and defeat the unbelievably, historically unpopular Ted Cruz. And then now, especially with that Puerto Rican comment at the Trump Nazi rally at Mad Madison Square Garden, who knows, maybe Rick Scott is vulnerable to Debbie Mercasso Powell in Florida. 
So if we, it was so funny not to interrupt, but just quickly to interrupt. Uh, It was so funny to have Rick Scott of all people come out against that remark. I mean, he he did make public statements saying that doesn't represent the people of the MAGA movement, et cetera. So even he knew that was, uh, you know, that was obviously something that was that was a smear. Can we just agree? Listen, you're you're a comedian, or I mean, how do you how do you allow someone to go up? what that comedian said. I mean, that was unbelievably vile stuff. Yeah, the the reason he was there is because he has an immense following, Tony Hinchcliffe. And I think people are increasingly ending up on the bill because they have Twitter followings or or YouTube followings or TikTok followings, all of which Tony Hinchcliffe has. He has an audience. And so it's thought if you bring enough people with big audiences, Dr. Phil, Hinchcliffe, uh, Musk, etc. If you bring them all to the podium, you know that's that's a really popular rally. Rick Scott says this can I remind for a reason. It's not funny and it's not true. Puerto Ricans are amazing people and amazing Americans. I've been to the island many times. It's a beautiful place. This again is Rick Scott from uh, Florida. Everyone should visit. I always do whatever I can to help any Puerto Rican in Florida or and so that was the uh, and so. Can on. I remind people? what real class looks like, even in the midst of a presidential campaign. Remember when John McCain had someone in his rally, and this is in 2008, who said, I don't want to vote for Obama. He's a Muslim. He's a this. And then at that moment, he didn't waste a second. He said, no, no, no. He's a fine man. He's a Christian. And, uh, you know, we disagree on issues. But Trump waited what till a day after the people because they love this stuff i and and you know why they love it mark is because what we are descending into and i am now no longer alone in saying this i've been saying this for years is donald trump is a fascist what mark kelly said what 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 the joint chiefs of staff said you know uh, chairman uh, mark milley said you know, what Kamala has now said, the fact that the owner of the Los Angeles Times, the billionaire oligarch owner of the L.A. Times, is afraid of what the dictator will do if he gets into power. So he doesn't have an endorsement in the L.A. Times. The same thing with The Washington Post. We are moving into fascism and 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 this rhetoric at that rally with this comedian and everybody else, and now Dr. Phil, is exactly the kind of stuff, this otherization is exactly what is the precondition for fascism. We're headed off a frickin' cliff if Donald is, Trump gets elected. It is a an insanely stark fact that some of what you're talking about is so clear in the decision I was talking about on the part of Bezos not to let the Washington Post come out with an endorsement. Same is true at the LA Times. And again, these guys are bellwethers because they're super rich guys who own these papers, and you wouldn't think that they would necessarily need to be scared, per se, of any repercussions from Donald Trump. But that's exactly what they're, what's happened? They are scared because Trump handles all of those contracts with Bezos and Amazon Web Services, additional involvement with uh, Blue Origin, which is Bezos' space company. So if they want a place at the government table, and, and their life may depend on it, uh, in the case of Bezos, most certainly the financial life of his company and so many of his companies depends on it, they have to play ball with this guy. And you're right. That's the rise of an authoritarian right there with the threats of political recrimination made good if you don't play ball. And honestly, Jimmy Kimmel has joked about it. Bill Maher has joked about it. It is real. If Donald Trump becomes president and is on his grievance retribution tour, and Jimmy Kimmel says something when he's president in the United States, Jimmy Kimmel says something bad about Donald Trump. Donald Trump could pick up the phone and say, I have you're on a conference call with the head of my FCC and we are going to pull your ABC broadcasting license. And you say, well, that can't happen in America. Well, people didn't think that kind of stuff could happen in Germany either. Uh, I love that example for the fact that it speaks to information. And one of the things I 
think has really been a casualty of the last, well, since the 90s, since Clinton changed ownership rules, is the, um, I mean, the Clinton administration changed ownership rules. Uh, you have no uh, cross-section of opinion anymore across the local stations, which really have a lot of weight, particularly with an older demographic that votes. Radio and television is controlled by a handful of companies. And, and, and so when you get to your situation where you go, okay, well, the chief executive is picking up the phone and he's going to threatening to pull the broadcast license, essentially, of, uh, of a major television carrier. Uh, yeah, that's the extension, again, of information being snuffed out. So people in a democracy, I, I think, Richard, people need all that information. So they go to other places. They come here to YouTube or, they, or, or to podcast. Uh, right. You begin to have to sort of chase stuff down, and then you really have a diminution, I think, of dependable information. You, it's just not, there's just not as much dependable information out there. So I am launching tomorrow, one week before the election, a, an ebook, a free ebook called Who to Vote For. And it is the most reliable, factual based voter's guide in history. All I'm doing is I'm saying the Women's Health Protection Act, for example, the bill that will restore uh, reproductive rights and codify Roe v. Wade, here's how Democrats voted for that in the last Congress, here's how Republicans voted for it. And going through price gouging legislation, banning assault weapons, democracy, voting rights legislation, healthcare, everything. So the, the biggest myth that keeps people from having confidence in our system is the myth that both parties are the same and therefore my vote does not count. And the truth is your vote counts a lot, like a lot, a lot, even in these down ballot races. And this is the greatest and simplest time in history, in the history of American politics to vote. You know why I say that? Because when you and I were younger, Mark, there were uh, liberal Republicans and there were conservative Democrats. And you couldn't just say, oh, vote for Democrats, vote for Republicans, because there was a huge variation within each party. Now, everything has very much gone from one to one end to the other and you have an entire party with very few exceptions that supports reproductive rights that supports climate action that supports you know gun safety that supports certain things and you have the other party who opposes everything and you would say well that's horrible we're so fractured we're so partisan no it's super simple if you want to restore women's reproductive rights and codify Roe v. Wade, vote for Democrats. And on so many other issues, if you want a national abortion ban or you just don't want to codify Roe v. Wade and you wanna leave it up to the states and we've seen what happens in places like Texas and other states, right? Then vote for Republicans and shut up, just vote. But people don't know that there is such a clear black and white up and down difference. And I'm an American, I believe in democracy. Here's your democratic choice. You can do, we can do this, we can do that. And these are all, we need a third party. We don't need a third party. The Democrats actually represent virtually everything that the vast super majority of Americans want. And if you don't understand that, it's because you're not getting the right information. Yeah, the, the idea that there isn't a starkness to this election, it's just so close. Gosh, it's just so fuzzy. I don't know they're so close on these issues. Really? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and this schism is is massive. And it's so interesting, too, that there's even a split in what you're describing at the beginning of this conversation with the people that you spoke with who are forecasting sort of top-of-ticket outcome. Um it's that close that we really just don't know. And it's remarkable to me that you have a guy who engineered a coup against the U.S. and somehow he's even in the hunt. I'm leaving out everything else, okay? It's just remarkable to me. But here's the thing. So what I hear from so many people is, well, I'm voting for Trump because I got a stimulus check from Trump. Or I'm voting for Trump because I had more money in my bank account. Or I'm voting for Trump because egg and bacon prices, and you and I have solved that problem in a whole different way, right? Because <laughs> we don't eat bacon. Sure. I sometimes eat eggs. I know you don't. You know, they're they're much higher now. And damn it, Biden, it's the worst economy in the world. I had an argument with my own neighbor about that. It's not the worst 
We're the envy of the world. We have the lowest inflation. We have the lowest price. We have the best unemployment numbers on and on and on. But ultimately, the problem is, and this is where fascism gets to breed, is that people do not have credible, reliable information about what is actually going on. And we've gone in and like the people who have made that comedian who is, you know, dissing Puerto Rico so famous online, you're in your bubble and you refuse to go out of it. So we need factual information. And that's why your show is so important. Well, thanks. I mean, I think there there are a bunch of shows and a bunch of places to get some good information. And uh, I just hope that it's getting to the right places because I think there's a lot of noise out there. It's very hard to cut through. I wanted to, in our last minute or so with you, uh, I'm so grateful for you know your your pop in visits. I have recalled that I think in the last couple of visits we've touched on the electoral college, and you know obviously it's a blight on the, uh, the political system when it comes to choosing a president in this country. But you made the point. I wonder again if you could just repeat it, please, uh, because again it comes up a lot that the Electoral College is not something that we just have to live with. Sure, we have to live with it this election cycle, but there's already an effort. It's a viable effort underway to get rid of the Electoral College. Run through it quickly, if you would, please, Richard Green. Yeah, well, The Daily Show last week did two days on this, which was fantastic. First of all, I have to say, to answer your previous question, there um, Democrats are four House seats away, four. House seats away from taking back the majority and being able to be, at the very least, a check and balance on Donald Trump if he does win. Four, we can elect way more than those four in California alone, or certainly California and New York. So if you're not planning to vote because your vote doesn't count because of the stupid electoral college for president, go and make sure to vote for the Democratic congressman, because it could be the difference of one congressman one congressman out of 435, whether we restore reproductive rights or we have an abortion ban. On the Electoral College, there is something called the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. It started in 2006. It is a state-by-state series of bills, same bill, that will guarantee that the Electoral College is changed as we know it because Everyone who signs this this bill, and California's passed it, New York's passed it, all the obvious blue states have passed it, 17 states plus DC, for a total of 209 electoral college votes, have promised, have guaranteed that they will give all of their electoral college votes to not the winner of their own state in an election, but the winner of the national popular vote. Here's the awesome news. If you have friends in the very important swing states of Pennsylvania, Arizona, Michigan, and Nevada, their state legislators are very, very close to passing this bill in each of those four states. They just need a few more Democrats in Pennsylvania, Arizona, Michigan, and Nevada to be able to get over the hump to pass the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, just a few in each of those states. And then we're at 260. And then Virginia, if we get a Democratic governor in Virginia, and they've already passed that bill in their legislature, we're now at 273. And the election, the presidential election of 2028, if we do this, will be decided by the National Popular Vote so that your vote, Mark Thompson, my vote in California will count just as much as everybody in Michigan and Nevada and North Carolina and all of that. So get make sure that people vote, not just for president, but also for Democratic state legislators, because virtually every Democratic state legislator wants the national popular vote. They want every vote to count. Virtually every Republican state legislator in every state in the country wants what Donald Trump wants, which is to be able to game the system and to get back into power as president because of this antiquated, racist, anti-democratic electoral college. Kim. Why would, Dean Green, why would swing states give up that power? Well, a lot of swing states already have, or, or quasi swing states. They would do it because they're Americans and they're sick and tired of 4,000 television ads for the last two months of every election cycle. 
and they honestly believe in democracy and that every vote should count. And if they're going to be selfish and they're going to try to extract favors and building projects and whatever, then I call that corruption. There it is. Um, the, you know, a lot of people are asking what possibly would uh, motivate red state legislatures to um, to overturn anything right, that, that plays to their favor right now. The, it, well, the, the, the truth, yeah. Here's another answer. And the other answer is, and Michael Steele, the former head of the Republican Party, is very involved in this. And one of the reasons he's in favor of this is he said, Texas is not going to be a reliably red state, for example, nor is any state. You can't guarantee the demographics. So why not make it be fair for everybody? Because you might be on the other side of that equation one day. By the way, the last part of this question from Uncle Jim is, uh, would SCOTUS find this constitutional? I'm assuming that the compact is successful. Yeah. Well, here's the good news and the bad news. So the good news is every lawyer working with the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact says that it is absolutely positively constitutional. Why? Because the Constitution gives full discretion and authority to every one of the 50 states to decide how to distribute their electoral college votes. And we already know that. In Maine and Nebraska, for example, they do it in a different way than a winner-take-all system in the other 48. That said, the Supreme Court is the Supreme Court. And as we have seen on immunity and Roe v. Wade, they can do whatever the hell they want. But there is a fix to that, Mark Thompson. I never come with a problem without a fix. And the fix is, if we elect four more Democrats to the House, one more net Democrat to the Senate and Kamala Harris, the United States government will pass a bill to reform the Supreme Court in one way, either through term lim limits or a rotating basis, so that we are not stuck with this Supreme Court for the next 20, 30 years. Wow. Wow. Uh, all right. Um, I'm looking at my, maybe my, I think my time with you is is up. I uh, I love that you cruise through our world and I'm looking forward to another visit. I have to tell you, we're looking at a, we're looking at a possibility here of joining live uh, with our show, uh, especially on, I got to do KFI on uh, Tuesday night, but then coming over and doing from the studio, a special election show just for an hour or so at eight o'clock from the eight to nine o'clock hour Pacific time. Are you around it to even pop in for 10 minutes or five minutes for that night? I, I I think it will be therapeutic for me. Okay, I'm gonna so be, I would love to have record. your take on it. We'll watch some of the real-time returns. Tony's going to hook up this thing, so we've got all the different networks, and you can watch it all but and watch it with us. It'll be like a watch party for an hour. Real, real quick, if people want my book, happy to send it uh, to them. They can You can post my email. Richard yeah, there it is. F who to vote? Here it is. Richard who to vote F for? Go ahead. What Richard is Richard at words that shook the world dot com. Just send it to me and I'll send you the book. And then I'm Richard at, 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 at words that shift the world. Sh shook the world. Words shook, shook the shook world. OK. Like yours, Mark, Tony's got time. it. Tony's got it down. Tony's got to enter it now. At, at, at Civic Dean on TikTok. I'm going to be posting all my yeah, stuff. Yeah, we've been up. posting your TikTok handle throughout this conversation. Okay. So there it is. Look at it. Richard at words that shook the world dot com. God, great you and to see you, Mark. It's Go great ahead. to see you. You and all your domain names. I love it. I <laughs> Let's see you on Tuesday night. You'll join us and we'll have some fun And we, while we watch, uh, hopefully, a um, uh, a defeat and Donald Trump will we, be out of our lives, at least temporarily. We are at the deciding point between utopia and dystopia, but it's fixable if people vote. Richard at wordsthatshooktheworld.com. Pick up his ebook. Thank you, Richard Green. Love you. See you again. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.